Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. It's good to have everyone on with us. And as we enter into the praise and worship portion of the church service, the word of the Lord tells us, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous. It says, For praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with heart, sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise. It says, For the work for the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. And on that let us lift up our hands and praise the wonderful name of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for allowing us to be in this church worship service. We give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory for the things that you are doing. Heavenly Father, we ask that you will continuously move in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Our God is good. We thank you, Lord for the victory this morning Jesus. in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. And below me, there's a place a, a place that shows an example of the link that is over in the comment section where uh, you could click on that hyperlink and you can give. And remember, all Christians faithfully and consistently uh, pay their tithe and gladly give in the offering as unto the Lord. And also, um, and you guys have been doing very well with your giving and so let's keep that going okay and there are some things that's that are in works that we are looking forward to right and so that being said let us pray over the offering heavenly father we thank you dear lord jesus for this time of giving father we ask that you will bless both the gift and the giver according to their giving in jesus name we ask amen amen, amen. amen. praise the lord and I um, want to give a shout out to Sister Linda. Sister Linda, I want to give a shout out to you saying hello. And um, we appreciate you. And also want to give a shout out to um, Sister Brittany and her kids. Want to give a shout out to um, Sister Alice Gay. I want to say hello to you, Brother Lance uh, and Brother Glover, Sister Constance. And a shout out to Sister Shimona. I want to just say hello to you, Shimona Horn, and a shout out to um, all the kids. And so, and if I miss you, don't be mad at me, okay? Sister Barbara Sears, shout out to her. Hope I hope you're doing good. I really do. I hope things are going good. On and and I ask y'all to pray for Sister Barbara Sears, okay? And also a shout out to Sister Natalie Bullard. Let me know when you're ready to for that. All right, that that thing that you and I've been talking about. Okay, let's go ahead and hit it. I don't want to lose anyone. I believe this is going to be a real blessing. God is not into wasting people's time. So let's get on with it and let's have a good time in the Lord. Amen. We're coming out. We want to check out the book of Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 38 through 43. The book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 38 through 43. The word reads, and he said unto them, why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Wow. Let me read that again. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Verse 39 says, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Then he said, Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. And then it says, and when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it and did eat it before them. So Jesus started eating food right there before him to show that he had indeed arisen, right? Let's turn over to the other page. The book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 45 through 47. I'm going somewhere with this. The book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 45 through 47. Check it out. It says, And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and says thou, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue, that word virtue means power, is gone out of me. 
And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. All right. And with the help of the Lord and the Holy Spirit, I have an invitation for you guys this morning. And that invitation is this. Jesus says, touch me. Not the pastor. I'm not talking about me. Jesus says, touch me. That's all a person has to do is touch Jesus. And God is going to help us this morning. The Lord is here and the message is already real. And as we've been saying over and over again, our God does not mess up messages, right? Amen. He has pitch perfect English. He has enough of it to penetrate your heart and deal with your conscience, even through somebody who may not have pitch perfect English. For those who find fault with everything, you know, because of their certain pet peeves. But the Lord knows how to touch their heart. God knows how to reach down deep and begin to deal with you because the Lord cares about his creation, right? Amen. And God has a message because of who he is. Jesus says, touch me. Let us pray. I would like to ask Sister Davis, ma'am, if you don't mind asking God's blessing on this church worship service. Father, thank you for your words of truth and power, Lord God. Mm. Lord, thank you for your encouragement already this morning. Lord, I pray, God, that you would give us hearts ready to receive your word and ears eager to hear what you have for each of us individually this morning. Father, I ask that you would bless the man of God. Father, that you would make preaching easy for him. And Lord, help him to deliver the message that you have for us. We ask all these things, giving you the praise and the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, we're going to see what the Lord does this morning. Let's hit it. Throughout the Old Testament, brothers and sisters, you never read, I've never read in the Old Testament, perhaps a, a too much of where someone has touched God. The only time that you really read about it, the only one time that I can remember off the top of my head, is the time where uh, Jacob had wrestled with the angel of the Lord, which we understand that angel uh, to be Jesus, right? But other than that, brothers and sisters, you never ever really read where uh, God is being he's being touched by someone and you never even see where the lord even asked anybody to touch him in the old testament right but over in the new testament brothers and sisters there is a constant reaching out seemingly a consistency of god wanting people to touch him Amen. jesus uh wanting people uh, to handle him right they want him, people to handle of the word of life. They, you, you read about uh, uh, how that even when he was born, the, the man had, had picked Jesus up in his arm and said, now I have seen thy salvation in so many words. If I get that correct there, uh, uh, people had lift the baby up and on and on and on, you know, in, in praise unto God. But going into this message this morning, I want to encourage you to reach out and touch Jesus, right? And quit saying, because a lot of people ask the Lord to touch them, and there's nothing wrong with that, but let's have a different approach this morning. There's nothing wrong with wanting the Lord to touch you, because we can say, Lord, touch me, and that is a good thing, right? Touch me, Lord Jesus, just like the song says. But this morning, let's try something. Let's rearrange or or our our uh, hearts this morning. Let's have a different fixation, if I can use that, about the situation and look at it and say, I am going to reach out and I'm going to be the one that touches Jesus this morning. Amen. I can touch the Lord if I really want to touch the Lord because he's asking me to touch him. Amen. All right. In the word of the Lord. It's amazing how this verse comes up here in the, in the book of Luke chapter uh, 24, verse 38. The word of the Lord talks about why are ye troubled and why do thoughts 
arise in your hearts. And that's what happens when people, and when they don't reach out and touch the Lord, right? Or they don't uh, understand it. They don't, they don't really get it or they're not led to reach out and touch the Lord. All of a sudden, troubles and thoughts begin to rise in the heart of the person, right? All of a sudden, they don't see any way out of their situation. Uh, they don't see any help at all. And and they and they uh, it seems as though they are in a prison or whatnot, right? And these people, yes, uh, in this scripture, they were troubled concerning the resurrection, uh, uh, the things that Jesus had talked about. They did. They really had some trouble, right? But Jesus appeared in front of them and began to deal with them about being troubled in their heart and the next thing you know, he said, handle me. He told them to touch him because you are troubled in your heart and thoughts and doubt is, a, is arising in your heart. So now it's time for you to handle or to touch the risen Savior, right? right? Jesus came to the earth, y'all, to be touched. Yes. In the Old Testament, one can say that the Lord Jesus was pretty much untouchable, right? Yes. But right. in the New Testament, guess what, brothers and sisters? I have some good news to those who are troubled. I have some good news to those who need deliverance, for those who need a life change, for those who need healing, for those who need uh, to be refreshed, those who need revival. It's time for you and for me to reach out and touch the Lord Jesus because he came to be touched. Amen. He came to be handled, right? Yes. And he said, uh, behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. You look at my hands, look at my feet, you see the piercing, it is me. Yes. And handle me and see, he said, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. Right. And the next thing you know, what did Jesus do after they touched him? He said, uh, do you have any food? And he sat there and he began to eat some food, crunching on some fish and on some honeycomb. Because he's saying, I can be touched. I want you to touch me because you're troubled. I want you to touch me because you're perplexed. I want you to touch me because there's a need in your life right now. Handle me. Yes. And let me tell you something, the Lord has not changed this morning, right? And this church worship service isn't over with yet. <laughs> it isn't over with yet. Because there's some people who still have doubts arising in their heart, yes. right? But in this church worship service, God is trying to fix that. God wants people saved. He does not want the sinner to die and go to hell. The sinner must touch Jesus. Yes. And he or she can, no matter what kind of a sinner they are. Oh, I don't care what you did. You don't have to confess to me. If it's that bad, guess what? All, really, all bad is a sin against God. All sin is a sin against God, no matter what it is. Right. Listen to me. Man don't make the rules. God is the one that makes the rules. And I say this from the aspect of looking at who is really the supreme governor. It is God. Amen. He is the one that's the supreme governor. Yes. Now, we're on the different governments. Yes, man have laws and stuff that we have to abide by. I get it. But the Lord is the ultimate bottom line. Amen. And all sin, every drop of them, our sin uh, is a is rebellion against the word of God, Amen. all of them. So don't come to me with this excuse that I've done too bad. People are always making an excuse. I was thinking about a person when we first went online, how that, and I, and I tripped I tripped out at it. Well, I don't want to go on Facebook because I don't want my friends from high school to find out that I'm on Facebook and they try to get in touch with me like they cannot control that. In other words, you're not saved enough, don't have enough God about you to do what God says and open up a Facebook page because 
because of the fact that the mind is so carnal, cannot see that perhaps the Lord wants you to actually open up a Facebook page so that you can go online and have church at a live service. But they come up with excuses even about Facebook. All right. It ain't like you can't control who your friends and who's not your friends. Amen. I can have a page where I don't have any of the friends I grew up with on. And you can too. And I'm not, and I'm not, and there's probably somebody online that think that I'm talking about that. I'm not talking about anyone that's online right now. Because this person that I'm talking about is not online with us Amen. right now. They make an excuse over anything, right? Because they have to touch Jesus. Why did trouble and thought all this stuff arise in your heart? When this stuff arises in your heart, it's time to touch the Lord. Amen. Because if I can't get him to touch me, surely I can touch him. Amen. Because he came for that purpose. Amen. All right, let's go over to the book of Luke chapter 8 verse 45. It talks about this woman. This woman had an issue of blood for 12 long years. And here comes touchable God. Here comes touchable Jesus. The Lord wanted all to come and touch him, right? And these people were thronging him. And they were, in other words, there was a crowd about them. And all kind of people was touching him. And he refused not one hand. He did not refuse one hand from touching him. All kind of people were touching him, but there were a lot of people there, no doubt, skeptically touching the Lord, right? There were a lot of people may have, they were probably touching him because he was quite a popular person, like they would with any person who is very popular. You get uh, uh, somebody who is popular nowadays. I, I'm not sure off the top of my head who the lead singer, singer is now. Uh, some pop artists get to walking around and they didn't have any bodyguards around them. What happens? The people will pull them apart. They will pull them in shreds, no doubt, because they're so starstruck, right? And no doubt uh, there were a group of people there. No doubt, perhaps the majority of them were starstruck at seeing Jesus, perhaps, right? And there were some people who may have reached out and touched him in doubt or whatever, saying, oh, oh man. But they still touched him because there was something about him and he still didn't even deny their hands, right? Jesus was there to be touched. Amen. And this lady who was considered unclean by the Old Testament law because she had a running issue. Uh, she was not allowed in the temple. She was not uh, allowed to be uh, uh, gathered with with clean people under the Old Testament law because, again, uh, she had a running issue that meant uh, that uh, anyone that touched this lady would become unclean, right? She said within herself, if I may touch just the hem of his garment, right? Uh, the Holy Ghost didn't instruct Jesus to run because there's an unclean person about to come and touch you, an unworthy, an unholy person who's about to come and touch you. Take off running from her or rebuke her, uh, I'm notice. I'm, I'm gonna allow you to notice that this unclean person is coming to you. So uh, take her life away from her. No, it did not work like that. God the Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Son wanted this lady to be successful in this. And so she began to make her way through the crowd. She began to press through the crowd. I don't know if she came crawling. I don't know if she came walking or whatever, uh, uh, however she did it. But a lot of people say perhaps she was crawling because she touched the hem of his garment. She touched the hem of the Lord's garment, perhaps. Uh, um, perhaps she was crawling or perhaps she came around and just touched uh, his garment real quickly, however. And then, she, then all of a sudden, Jesus says, somebody touched me. <laughs> the lady didn't ask for God to touch her, y'all. Listen to me, y'all. The lady said, I'm going to touch God if I can't get him to touch me. Amen. And so what happened? She got healed. And before them all, Jesus had her confess because he wanted them to see that he is the Christ. He wanted to be uh, glorified as the one that would come and deliver them without him having to um, outright tell them. And guess what? She began to confess. 
He said, somebody touch me. And Peter began to say, Master, all kind of folk touching me. He said, uh-uh. This was a touch, a real touch, because I perceive that healing power has gone out of me. Somebody got a benefit from touching me. And he wanted to know who it was. Why? Because he wanted all around to see I came to be touched. Amen. Hmm. And so what happened? The lady began to confess, Lord, I am the one that touched you. I'm the one that touched you, she said. And she probably said it bashfully. And immediately, I've been clean. Amen. And because Jesus was able to clean that lady, guess what? That deemed Jesus to be clean too. Because of the fact that only clean can heal and save unclean, right? All right. Unclean can't save you. Unclean can't right. heal you. Unclean can't help you. Garbage can't clean up that which needs to be cleaned up. She came to the to the fountain of cleansing, Jesus, and she was cleansed. And the Lord was not polluted from her touch, Amen. because if she had touched the high priest. That high priest would have had to go wash somewhere. He would have to go wash somewhere because under the Old Testament law, he would be considered unclean because he, uh, that lady touched, her, uh, touched him. But the thing is, they could not bring Jesus under Old Testament law like that because he fulfilled the law because he's righteous. And when she touched him, he made her clean. And so Jesus was clean already remained clean never been unclean and she became clean from touching jesus and jesus can make you clean this morning because he said touch me Amen. what is your need this morning right Amen. why the thoughts and trouble and oh man i'm on my way to hell how long you gonna be on your way to hell how long are you going to be lost without God? How long are you going to be unsaved? I mean, I mean, you're already be, you're dreaming about hell. You're thinking about hell. You're, you're older now, and, and you're wondering, uh, uh, man, I don't know where I'm going to go when I die. Why do trouble and all this stuff arise in your heart? I'll tell you why. Because you won't touch God. If you can't go to heaven right now, why don't you touch heaven? Amen. I'm trying to help somebody out here. You get mad at me, but get mad. That's okay. Get mad. God will make you glad when he reach out and touch your lost soul. When the, when the person reach out and touch the Lord, there's nothing wrong with touching God for healing. He can do it, and he will do it. And we have to just believe that way. Amen. Reach out and touch Jesus. The word tells us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 15. It says, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Yes. In other words, let me put it in modern day uh, English here. Our high priest, who is Jesus, can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities and he's not untouchable. Amen. We don't have an untouchable high priest here. They had an untouchable high priest back then, obviously, but we have a touchable high priest. And then it says, if you skip down to verse 16 of Hebrews chapter 4, it says, Let us therefore come boldly or freely unto the throne of grace. The throne of grace. What is grace? Grace is what? Is it what? Unmerited favor? Right? Is it unmerited favor? I deem grace as help. You know, that's the way I look at grace. I, I think in layman's term, it's only the grace of God. I think it's only the help of God. We're saved by grace. And that not says we're saved by, by God bringing us his Un help that we didn't he helped me get saved that's the way i look at grace amen right grace is what sister davis i married unmerited favor unmerited favor but in, in 
people who think like me, like a like a a, a, a landscaping construction worker, blue collar guy. Grace me, man. That was hell. <laughs> That's where I look at it. Let us, and then the word, even the word of God even says it. It said, let us therefore come boldly, freely into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. Well, we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of what, y'all? Need. Yes. In time of need. So why do thoughts arise in our hearts? If thoughts and all this stuff, if, if and we're troubled and, and, and uh, we got these things arising in our heart, Jesus comes out. The next scripture says, behold, my hands and my feet handle me. And over in the book of Hebrews, even in spirit here. See, that's why I say this ain't over with. Even in spirit, he said, behold, look, he said, he said right here, handle me because of the fact that. I can be touched according to my word in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. You can touch the Lord even in spirit. He said, handle me. Here I am. I am here to be touched. And here's the question, though. This was a cute little message, and I can get all excited about it. It may even get some, somebody may even watch it on YouTube. Here's the cold thing, though. What are you going to do with it? Oh, Pastor, that was an awesome message. It ain't awesome until you utilize it. Amen. Then it'll be awesome. You got to use the word of God. You got to use the sermons and the messages that are preached and ministered, served to you. If I'm serving this stuff up for you, you don't eat it. What good is it? Yeah. Right? So, so here's the thing. The thing is this. I need some works now. I've already built up your faith with the help of God. And God says, now make your faith alive and reach out and touch the Lord right there at your house. All right. And don't procrastinate. People got all kind of things. They, people got all they, their world. I don't know. Somebody ain't going to touch them because they know they can touch them. That's how weird people are. People are so weird that you can't even see where it's coming from. You know, I, they're so weird. There are some people, there's somebody out there that's not going to touch the Lord because they are afraid that they might just actually touch him. And so what do they do? They put it off. But at least, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, at least you got some happiness. At least I know at any day and at any time. As long as the Lord uh, allows me to breathe another day, I can touch Jesus if I try hard enough. I can touch the Lord if I give it my best. Yeah. And you can. The woman with the issue of blood, she had to put forth her best effort to get what she needed. Amen. She had to put forth her effort. She did, she did, she did. And God is asking you, do what it takes to touch him. And you can touch heaven this morning. But the question is, will you do it? Look, brothers and sisters, man, that was a short service. I kind of don't even want to end it. You can go on and on and on in scripture about, <laughs> about Jesus uh, touching or, or you or people reaching out and touching the Lord. You can go on and on in scripture, man. But God is saying, here I am. Handle me. I am real. The other people, all these other folk, they, they don't, they're not real. These other religions don't have it. But Jesus is saying this morning, I am real. Touch me. And with our heads bowed, I feel like I was short and sweet. But... It's all good. What time you got? 11.29. That was a short message. But anyway, with our heads bowed and eyes closed and reverence to the Lord, pray after me, Heavenly Father. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for walking on this earth. I thank you, dear Lord, for dying on the cross, raising on the third day, 
For even at the cross, they handled you. They hung you. They handled you. They touched you. And there you died for them and for me.